God chose Paul and Paul was saying, everything I learned became fuel that brought me to the sacrifice of Christ. Now I'm going to forget those things which are behind me and I'm going to press toward the mark. Remember? See, that's what most Christians don't have. They don't know how to know God. They don't have a relationship. And it's the fellowship of his suffering. Yeah, too. that too. You know? Because we go through things, but we see that in that, we see the mercy of God, the strength of God, the compassion of the Father. The he, he picked it up as as elimination, okay? Yeah, yeah. And he called it dove's dung, okay? Right. That it was actually uh, poo-pooing, okay? Yeah, well, I, is that okay to say poo-poo? You know, I don't know what it uh, tastes uh, let me, like. Let me see if I can use him, another word. I don't know what it tastes uh, like, but... Excrement? He, yeah. a file cabinet sitting next to his desk and that file cabinet had all of his sermons that he had compiled over the last three years being there in college he said I have more sermons than anybody in this dorm and in this school put together I have more illustrations than and he anybody. went on the radio if you remember well, that, went to his to that. Head. Yeah. I'm getting that to went that. to his head yeah know? well th that's my point yeah. here's here's what's going on so he started telling me all the reasons why he wanted to to make this big decision, leave school, not finish the four years. And our, everything was based on, I have this, I compiled that, I have this many illustrations, I have more than anybody else, I've invested myself, I have showed myself a, a workman rightly dividing the word, et cetera, et cetera. But you see, the whole problem was, is that he had a, everything was consisted and existed in what he had done and what he had compiled well, and what he put together. the same thing I had. He wanted to be a big name preacher. Absolutely. He, he wanted, wanted what fame. everybody else he wanted. He wanted all of the, the, the grandeur. And this story has a tragic end to it. It does. Tragic end. But you see, religion puffs you up. And boy, look, the teaching that we were getting there, you know, yeah, they talked about dying to God on one hand, but then on the other hand, they were pushing the, the lever, say, pushing the pedal to the floor, saying, if you don't get out there and do something for God, then you ain't, you're, not, you're not right. You're not doing what God wants you to do. And put this pressure on us to have to perform. And so he felt that pressure. i got to go do something. I can't just sit in here another year. And he stepped out, came back to New Orleans, went on the radio, thought, man, I'm going to blaze a trail, set the world on fire. And he fell flat on his face to the point where he got mad and angry at God. And Be bitter. And yeah, yeah, totally bitter to where he didn't even, he wouldn't even go to church no more. He forsook the Lord. And the reason for it was, is he felt like, man, I put all this time, all this effort, all of the, sought the Lord, put all of this energy and effort into this, which I believe was for the Lord. And God never used it. God didn't anoint it. And God didn't cause it to be successful. Fell away from God and became a derelict, a derelict, an a, a indigent person out on the street begging for money at a street corner with a little sign in his hand. Had a and tragic missing end. fingers. Yeah, yeah missing fingers. His life went totally downhill. You see, the enemies come to rob, steal, and destroy. Now, I realize this man had a decision to make. But his initial influence that drove him to that point to make a wrong decision, to walk away from God and walk away from the things of God, what drove him to that point was that religious spirit that i got to perform, i got to do something. If I'm not doing it, if I'm not preaching, if I'm not ministering, if I'm not studying, putting things together, and all of that was driving him, and he felt like this was the way to be approved of God, used of God. And you know what? Yeah. When, he didn't, when it didn't happen... It was to his demise because he made the wrong decision. I'll give decision. you the perfect example. In the garden, when the devil, the serpent, in chapter 3, told Eve, okay, here's what he said. Hath not God said, okay, now that's a question mark. Right. He took the exclamation of God, twisted it into a question mark. But listen to what he says. Hath not God said that you cannot eat of every tree. Okay, now here's how the devil works, okay? Right. 
If he can't uh, get you one way, he'll get you another way. He'll do what the taskmasters did. When you complain, he'll put more on you. See, so it, in his case, God was ripping you off. You can't eat every tree. No, God just said, don't eat that tree. Right. You could eat every tree, but you can't eat that tree. You see, so what the devil does, if, if you don't do one aspect of it, he'll, he'll put more burden on you. So you're busy, busy like Martha. Right. Remember the passage? Sure. Martha was washing dishes. Mary was sitting at his feet. She was upset with Mary. She's washing the dishes. He's sitting at the feet. And she, she wants Martha to come help her in the kitchen. Yeah. And Jesus has a rebuker and says, listen, Mary has chosen the best thing, right. which is to sit at the feet of Jesus and allow him to do in you. Pastor Bill, listen, how many books could you have written and I could have written in 44 years? Wow. The reason we didn't do it, two reasons that I didn't do it, was because in uh, Galatians 2, Paul, when he got his revelation, he went to those of reputation, lest he would be a castaway, meaning preaching something that wasn't uh, right. So I wanted God to fully develop, okay? The, the, look, look, I still wasn't ready to do what we're doing now. But what happened was, and I'll just say it, we, the, the virus hit, right. and we were house-ridden, and God began to put it in our heart. God used an unlikely vessel sure. uh, to, to prompt us to come. And now we're ready to share it with the world. But what we did, we didn't go run out there before we allowed God to do in us. We have 40 plus years of ministry and learning, and now we're ready to give it. Well, and here's the thing too, Pastor. You see, Paul writes and he says that men would come and they would have their their, their documents that would give acclamation to who they are and, and what they can do and all of their accomplishments. He said, I don't need that. He writes that. And he says, I don't need it. And he said, the reason I don't need it is because I have you as my testimony. I have you, those that were born again, those that were getting saved, those that were coming to know Christ, those that were getting delivered from the law, and coming into a relationship with Jesus Christ based on the new covenant. And he said, and what he meant by that statement is this. He said, I don't need to have any letter of recommendation or any letter that states all of my accomplishments. He said, my accomplishment and my success is based on what's happening in the people's lives that have opened up their hearts to receive Jesus Christ and have received the Spirit of God within them and that has brought about a fruit and has changed their lives. He said, the greatest testimony that I have is not about myself or my accolades or my accomplishments or how many digits I have uh, stapled on the back end of my name or Dr. So-and-so. It was all related to the fruit of what was happening in the people's lives. And pastor, I said that to say this one thing. This message, this message of the gospel of grace that we've been declaring in this church for all these years, I don't have to say, well, the Word says it. I can see the fruit in the people's lives. How many people, I mean, I could, we could come here on a Sunday morning if we were allowed to assemble together right now and say, how many people's lives have been changed because of the gospel of grace? And every hand would go up for the most That's part. Right. Because we brought them to an understanding, hope, you know, by the Spirit of God, God illuminating it, they have come to an understanding to realize that they're not standing on the outside trying to get in. They're already accepted. They're, already, they, they're walking in forgiveness. They're walking in righteousness. They're walking in holiness. Not by what they're doing. They're free now. It's by what he's done. And so that's the fruit that this message produce, produces. And we've seen it in people's lives. More people have come to me and said, Pastor, since we've been sharing, you, you and Pastor Jonas have been preaching this message, I've gotten, a, God has opened my eyes to understand it, and it has literally transformed and revolutionized my life. So the fruit is not just what God's done in our lives by the transformation of the truth and setting us free. It's what's been happening. Like Paul said, my testimony and my credentials or my validation of what I'm doing and what I'm preaching is based on what's happening in people's lives that are open to receive it. Well, in Philippians 3, Paul says, I count all of those accolades 
as dung, yes. right? that I might win Christ. He names his credentials. Yeah. He's, he, he's circumcised on the eighth day. He's of the tribe of Benjamin. A Hebrew a of Phari Hebrews. Pharisee of the Pharisees. Okay. As, as keeping blameless. the law. <laughs> well, now watch. Yeah. When he says blameless in the law, he's talking about as far as ceremonialism. Right. Okay. Right. He never missed a feast. He ne but as far as what happened was uh, when Paul said that... Uh, all of his accolades of being circumcised on the eighth day, Hebrew of the Hebrews, blameless in the law. He realized, though, that the moral law was his failure. Now, when he said, I count all of my accomplishments as dung, here's what it means. In Numbers 19, there is uh, the red heifer, and they use dung as the fuel to, to burn to ashes, which represented Christ our sacrifice. So he's not saying, oh, it's all baloney, uh, bull this and that. He's not trying to convey it in that way. Everything he learned memorizing the first five books of the Bible as a Pharisee. Why God chose him? Because he understood the law where these disciples were fishermen. One was a Canaanite out of the 12, and one was a tax collector. And they were men that were unlearned. And it, it even says it in the Bible, how does these men know this who are ignorant and unlearned? And so God chose Paul, and Paul was saying, everything I learned became fuel that brought me to the sacrifice of Christ. Now I'm going to forget those things which are behind me and I'm going to press toward the mark. Remember we right, talked about it right. of the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's excellent. Excellent. I love that about the fuel. Yeah, the no. things that he learned, the right. things that he gained. Yeah. But you know what? That That is what enabled him to receive this mystery when God called him up into heaven because the Lord knew he understood Everything there was to know about the Jews' religion, as it's written in Scripture, the Jews' religion. So what God did is He gave him the revelation of who Jesus is and what He did, and the plan of God, and how it was accomplished and, and, and done. And then when he got that revelation, he compared that and to what the Jews were teaching and what he had been brought up in. And, most, and you know something, I was brought up under a certain religion, but when I received Christ... All of a sudden, my eyes were open. All of a sudden, I began to realize there's more to it than just going there and doing, going through the ceremonialism of that belief system. And when he started looking at what he had been taught, led to believe, grew up in, followed uh, with great compassion, with great earnestness, he realized that it all paled in the light of what Jesus did and that he was the true Savior of the world and he was the one that he needed to get to know. He said, I want to know him. See, that's what most Christians don't have. They don't know how to know God. They don't have a relationship. And it's the fellowship of his suffering, yeah, too. Yeah, that too. You know? Because we go through things. But we see that in that, we see the mercy of God, the strength of God, the compassion of the Father, the, the understanding that he has for us. Pastor, can I just read one quick little scripture? Yeah, I'd love that. Paul, Paul I, I, I'm going to look over here to my computer. But... um. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 1. This is one of my favorite scriptures. This is one of the scriptures that I believe is paramount in everything that well, well, we're, one second, we're doing. Bill. I want everybody to know they could see our professionalism here. You see how oh, organized? Oh, oh, yeah. We're actually sitting in shorts, guys. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this isn't about, you know, a tie, a shirt. I, look, I was on, uh, and I want you to read that in a second. I was on television 15 oh, years. Yeah. Yeah. I had to bring five suits. I did that I had 11. To time, yeah, I, I had to time my sermons. Uh, and now we could just talk and fellowship. Yeah. And we do that. We've been doing this for what? Oh, man, 40 something years. Yeah, the only thing we've sharing. eliminated from this conversation yeah. right here is a telephone. Yeah. Because we do this all the time on the yeah. phone. Now, right before you read that, I, I, yeah. I don't want to lose this thought because it's good, sure, okay? Sure. Because what's happened is, and what's Paul talking about when he's relating to the old covenant that brought him into the revelation of the new covenant, I heard uh, Franklin Jensen, and he used some. A license, I'll tell you that. Right. Uh, but it was good. Okay, I heard him preach, and I think he was preaching uh, at Hill Songs when I heard his sermon. And of course, when when they were in famine and the Syrian army had surrounded them, remember the four lepers uh, oh, that yeah. found. Okay, oh, yeah, that story. Okay, they were eating 
uh, the heads, uh, uh, donkey heads, and dove's, and, dung. and dove's dung. Now, dove's dung was a plant, right. okay? A but he he picked it up as as elimination, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And he called it dove's dung, okay? Right. That it was actually uh, poo pooing, okay? Yeah, I, well, is that okay to say poo poo? You know, I don't know what it tastes uh, uh, let me, like. Let me see if I can use him, another word. I don't know what it tastes uh, like, but excrement. It, yeah. But I, I have no idea what it tastes like. But what he used it, saying it doves dung, it probably tasted but like But here, here was his thought. It was a good thought, okay? Yeah. Even though it had a little uh, license in it, okay? Because right. we're real strict, okay? But in, in that case, because I preach a message, what kind of dog are you? And right, you use right. a little license, okay? But the, what his whole point was, the doves dung was the dung. Right. We got right. the dove, the Christ, mm. the Holy Spirit. Right. And what was in the past was only the fuel or dung. It's the excrement. It's the, it's, it's the waste right. of not now going back. It, it's the dove versus waste. And here's another one before you read. When Noah went on the ark, he let go of a raven. The raven didn't come back. I what? preached this before that to the degree you know his head, He's too wise to make a mistake. To the degree you know his power, his hand, he's too powerful to fail you. And to the degree you know his heart, he loves you too much to hurt that's, you. That's a powerful No, no, I, it's a very powerful Because point. we see it in its fullness right now. Right. How religion's affected the church. Yeah. And how it's, the church isn't what it should be. It's hindered the growth of the church and the effectiveness in the world today. Right. Knowledge would increase. And here's where we are. And I believe this with all my heart. I believe that we are not the only ones that God has given us to. If, if, we, if we're preaching that, you need to turn us off right, right. away.